their heads and wondered whether the silly machine would hold together. Some made jokes and had their fun, saying the thing would never run. And when it did run and didn't fall apart, they still said it couldn't beat a horse and cart. And so it looked, and so it seemed, but some folks worked, and some folks dreamed. The heartbeat of that dream was the piston engine. It marked the beginning of a new age of power and convenience that helped shape the destiny of a nation. years ago, on the hard sands of Daytona Beach, auto pioneers competed in tests of speed, endurance, and safety. And for 50 years, the story of the automobile has been the story of men who dreamed and worked to prove in competition that they could make the motor car better, safer, faster. They still do. This is Florida's and the country's greatest automotive show of stock car performance. Thunderbirds roar over the course in salute as fans of every age pack the grandstand and line the world-famous four-mile beach and road course. This is the first running of this year's cars, and the fans are waiting to see what the automaker's new models will do when the chips are down. <laughs> Pace lap of the Grand National is underway. 45 stock cars representing almost every American make. What does a man do to turn the automobile you and I drive into a racing stock car, safe and fast enough to compete on the toughest stock car track in the country? Months before the race, work begins in hometown garages after the day's work is done. Official rules require all engine parts to be standard equipment in production and available from the manufacturer. Only modifications to the body and suspension are permitted to improve handling and safety in competition. Suspension is reworked and strengthened. A straight-through exhaust system allows the engine to deliver maximum power without back pressure. Anything that adds weight without improving performance is removed. Headlights, trim, Door handles, hubcaps, go. The passenger side of the front seat, go. The driver's area is padded to cushion the driver as he turns corners at 120 miles an hour. Seat belt and shoulder harness hold him in the seat as he bounces along rough straightaways at 140 miles per hour. Roll bars anchored to the chassis will give him breathing space if he flips. The instrument panel is reworked to tell him what he has to know at a glance. Oil, water, fuel, and tachometer. The engine is tuned and adjusted. Now, the car is ready for a test run. As it moves out of the garage, it carries the hopes and dreams of weeks of work. On back roads, in the early morning hours, the car is put to the test. After the warm-up run, the driver gets the word to open it up.
Run after run, the car is shaken down. For the final test, it's brought to the beach. Here's how Paul Goldsmith, top driver, describes the run around the four-mile course. Well, you have a tendency to fishtail and spin all the way up the entire beach, clear to the north turn. You get out fairly wide next to the ocean, and you go into a soft sand before you get to the hard shale and the bank turn. And then your car is pitching and bouncing. And about the middle of the turn, you broadside a little bit, and you get a hold of that black top, and it, your tires squeal for a little ways, and it starts accelerating tremendously down the back stretch. And the speed that you reach on the back stretch is in excess of 140 mile an hour. It's several spots. I mean, all four wheels will leave the ground from that's how rough it is going down through there. There's one point that uh, I'd say all four wheels must be all oh, six inches in the air, it feels like, when you're in the car. And, and then you touch your brakes as it's coming down. Where we drop off into the high bank turn, which is uh, shale, clay, and dirt, and sand, and it gets pretty slippery. You proceed through the turn, and you're coming out on the beach. The time for testing is done. Race day. The parade lap of Chevrolet, Mercury, Plymouth, Ford, Pontiac, Chrysler, Buicks, and Oldsmobile. The field of 45 wheels off the two-mile beach straightaway and into the north turn. The next time they hit this turn, they will be shifting down into second at 120 miles per hour. 80 times, they'll twist through these hairpin turns in a 160-mile race that will torture chassis and engine more in one afternoon than 50,000 miles on the highway. Halfway down the asphalt backstretch and heading for the south turn that will lead them back on the beach. Here they come. They're picking up speed. The green flag. The race is on. <laughs> Through the south turn safely and onto the beach. The leaders jockey for position. There's trouble in the south turn. Two cars collide fighting for the first lap position. But no one is hurt. Down the beach, full throttle. Goldsmith in car number three, Pontiac, is in the lead. Into the tricky north turn, sliding, braking, shifting, accelerating in split seconds. Goldsmith pours on the coal as they hit the back stretch. Look out! Betty Rakestraw in number 98, Mercury, rams the guardrail. He's all right, but his car stalled. This may start trouble. The rest of the field make their way past the disabled car, but watch out! Frank Thompson in number 40 Ford smashes broadside into Rake Straw, and they both go through the rail. Watch it! One, two, three other cars lose control, but they stay on the track. Nobody's hurt, and they're going back for more. Dick Foley in number 61 Chevrolet spins into the inside rail, and two more cars are out of competition. Here comes the leader, Goldsmith in number three, at the end of the two-mile backstretch. He dives into the south turn, driving a steady, even pace that's building a lead. Turner in number 26 Ford jams the accelerator to the floor and closes in. Smokey Unic, mechanic on number three, signals Goldsmith that Turner is a threat. And as Goldsmith enters the north turn, he begins to run wide open. Turner in Ford number 26 is too close for comfort.
Goldsmith's average speed is 110 miles per hour, and Turner, hot on his tail, cuts the corners, making every second count. Goldsmith, alone in the north turn, can really make time. and Buick M1 and Phil Moore in a Chevrolet both lose control and slide broadside around the north turn. Roberts missed Moore by inches and they're both back in the running. Goldsmith's number three is still holding on to first place. Turner's out of control. He slides through the safety markers and comes to a stop. He recovers and guns the car back on the court. What a show of car handling. He's not through. There's the white flag. Only one more lap to go. Can number three Pontiac hold the lead for one more lap? The fans are on their feet as number 26 Ford roars after the leader. Goldsmith misses a turn. in sight. Goldsmith gets back onto the track with Turner only yards behind him. Goldsmith streets for the checkered flag and wins the closest race ever run on Daytona's beach and road course. Before the year is out, drivers and mechanics will race stock cars 2,000 times on dirt and asphalt tracks around the country, proving their experience and equipment in competition. Here's what Smokey Unick, winning mechanic, has to say. Well, in, in this business, you you have to use about the best that you can get a hold of of everything. In the uh, ring department, uh, we can get about any kind of ring we want. And Perfect Circle seems to make the best ring for us fellows to race on. Now we travel from Daytona with its color, sight, and sound to another scene of glory to another proving ground. 